What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have a lot to talk about today, especially as more ensembles are continuing to come in and showing signs of organization and development. And as we get into September, where we can finally start talking about tropical organization and development for that month, as that is looking like it's uh, going to be shaping up to be a relatively active month, as it is every year during hurricane season, and that's just ultimately stuff we're going to have to pay attention to. Ultimately, what we've been noticing is it's kind of a, going to be more of a back uh, half, uh, uh, or at least a backlog type of system where things don't start organizing and developing. There's, it's been a rather sl uh, a rather slow. Uh, starts of the hurricane season, of course. Um, we had Barrel happen back in late June and early July, and that was really the highlight, but we also had Debbie and Ernesto happen, and then we have a few more storms that are going to be forming in the next couple of weeks, and then you're going to have things continue to ramp up as the Climate Prediction Center is warning that there's going to be a very large probability of organization and development, especially in the main development region, and they are calling for a larger than average amount of moisture for much of the Caribbean Sea and parts of the Gulf. So that could potentially be an area for tropical development as well. So we're going to have to pay close tabs to that. But first, we're going to show you the satellite imagery just to kind of give you close tabs of what we're looking at. And then we'll move on from there. First of all, this is the Atlantic wide satellite imagery right here. That tropical wave has come off the coast of Africa and it's kind of just uh, stretched out. And it become this rather large area of convection right here. Definitely something you're going to have to pay attention to, at least the southern part of it. But the main wave where the uh, center of it is, it's over the Cape Verde uh, Islands at this current point. And that's a wave you're going to have to watch down the road, as that does have a possibility for development, according to some ensembles. But if we go ahead and show you the eastern Atlantic as well, we are seeing some convection firing up just uh, uh, to the east of it in Mauritania and Mali, Senegal, those areas right there that it's going to be coming off very shortly and that might end up helping this tropical uh, system right here so we're going to have to pay attention to that right here we're paying attention to a very active sahel region in terms of tropical waves the thing that's been kind of slowing uh, away uh, uh, development down has been the dry air relatively although that's becoming less and less of an issue as we get into early september and that's just stuff you are going to have to pay attention to in that regard this is going to be another backlogged system like i said previously and that's just stuff we are going to have to prepare for because i keep saying comments saying oh patrick this is going to be a bus stop uh, hyping it up and all of that stuff. Well, first of all, no, I'm not going to stop covering uh, this hurricane season because 2024 is still going to be a relatively active season, no matter how you put it. Even the uh, National Oceanic and Aeronautics Administration, or NOAA, has now put a 90% probability of a very powerful and very active tro uh, tropical season in the Atlantic. So it, I'm just go conveying what the experts are telling you right there. I'm not exactly an expert myself. I'm going to eventually be one. But ultimately, yeah, I'm just kind of conveying what the NHC has been saying, what the Climate Prediction Center has been saying, as well as what NOAA has been saying, as well as just kind of giving you updates on the ENSO cycle because that has been playing a very big role. Regardless of that, though, we can go ahead and show you the uh, water vapor imagery right here. There's a lot of moisture firing up across much of the main development region. There's not nearly as much dry air as there, uh, there previously was anymore. There's been a lot of stuff continuing to organize. We have a front moving through off the Atlantic coast that's con producing a lot of convection and moistening up that uh, part of the atmosphere. You also have the much of the Caribbean Sea, with the exception of the extreme eastern Caribbean off the coast of Puerto Rico and the Antilles, starting to moisten up and allow for a lot of areas of organization and development. But in the meantime, that's just stuff you're going to have to pay, att uh, pay attention to uh, in that regard. So let's go ahead and show you the Sahara dust areas right there. You, As you can see, based on what we're taking a look at, there's not really that much Sahara dust anymore. There is a little bit of dry air in particular, but the Sahara dust is pretty much gone. You can't see it on satellite. All of it's getting pushed up to Europe, and that's and that oppressive Sahara air layer we were seeing previously is no longer going to be there, especially for that part of the main development region when things start to ramp up in the next couple of weeks. So that's stuff we are keeping very close tabs on. 
on all flanks uh, uh, over there. Let's go ahead and show. Uh, let's go ahead and give you the latest ocean analysis as well. We're going to go ahead and get, uh, show you the Enso regions just to kind of give you an understanding of what we're looking at. Regions three and four have been holding at around point, negative 0.28 degrees below average. That is in the negative neutral phase in that area right there. Regions one and two is still in the La Nina at negative 0.61 uh, degrees below average. What triggers a La Nina is negative 0.5 in all levels or below, and that's what we're paying attention to in that regards. Regardless, though, a negative uh, a negative neutral phase is going to be very problematic for much of the Atlantic because this is a similar step to how 2017 began because you have all these temperatures, you have all these sea surface temperatures right here based on the climate reanalyzer. Re We're going to go ahead and show you the North Atlantic as well, in particular, show you the C uh, SST anomalies. This is a kind of a similar sub to what we had back then where we had generally cooler than average uh, sea surface temperatures. And we know we have a cold wake thanks to Hurricane Ernesto, but that's going to quickly recover in that regard. And but meanwhile, in the deep tropics, pretty much the tropical Atlantic, where it's 30 degrees north to the equator, you're still seeing those above average temperatures right there. And that's what's going to end up fueling this hurricane season as a result. And that's just stuff you're going to have to pay very close attention to. You're going to have to pay attention to the water levels. You're going to have to pay attention to the, uh, uh, to the climatology. You're going to have to pay attention to a lot of stuff if you are forecasting for such synoptic scale events. So that's just ultimately stuff we're paying attention to. Also, uh, the water temperatures are starting to recover. They're back up to 25 degrees Celsius and then a little bit of them. It did kind of drop off thanks to Ernesto and it's it's now about, what is this, about 0.3 degrees Celsius below the 2023 levels, which those were record warm water temperatures and I've been saying this before, we're either going to be meet it, get dr just above it by the time we get to September 10th or it, we're going to go right below it. And that's kind of what we're seeing right here. We're, as we continue to see more and more hurricanes and more and more convection start to fire up across much of the tropical Atlantic, what that typically ends up doing is it helps cool the sea surface temperatures and it helps just kind of mitigate uh, all that. And that was the main concern last year when I was talking about this because we had no, uh, we had no uh, hurricanes or tropical cyclones enter the deep Caribbean Sea until barrel that happened in late June and early July. And what the, all that ocean heat content ended up doing was it allowed for barrel to become a Category 5 annular hurricane and maintain major hurricane strength all the way up to Jamaica, cause a ton of agricultural and a, a, a damage and just ultimately it was not good make landfall in the yucatan peninsula as a category two and then reorganize and, and intensify into a hurricane and make landfall in texas so that's ultimately what we saw uh, with a uh, hurricane barrel and that's why the, all that untapped ocean heat content and untapped sea surface temperatures which we can go ahead and show you right now is worrying me today so this is what we have pulled up for you here's the sea surface temperatures uh, right here, a lot of 31 plus degree Celsius waters in the Gulf of Mexico, in the Atlantic Basin around the Bahamas, in the Caribbean Sea, and it's just ultimately a, v a very volatile situation where one tropical wave that gets in just the right conditions could really explode and really just ramp up in all these temperatures as it gets closer to land, which is absolutely the last thing we want to see because, you know... Uh, when you see uh, systems like this that enter these warm waters and the wind shear weakens enough for things to organize and develop, you start seeing potential rapid intensification. And we've seen plenty of scenarios where that ended up really ba uh, affecting a lot of people in a really awful way. Barrel, for example, was one of those examples. It went from a 35, a 65 mile per hour hurricane, uh, sorry, not hurricane, tropical storm to a 130 mile per hour category four hurricane before it uh, before it weakened slightly, then reintensified into a high end cat four and make landfall north of Grenada and then just entered the Caribbean, became a cat five and did all that stuff right there. And that's just the main concern we have with this expanding further out right here with the sea surface temperatures you are noticing a very quick recovery of the water temperatures near bermuda thanks to ernesto it's going to take probably another two weeks for it to fully recover but it's doing it at a very fast rate and that's just something that's typically what ends up happening as we get into later august it's generally around early september when the water temperatures peak on average and then they start to slowly go down towards the second half of the month
month, and then they start to drop in October a little bit more, and then they start plummeting in November, and that's typically what happens climatologically speaking. So we still have another three or four weeks of warming, or at least some sort of stagnation uh, stagnation where the water temperatures stay the same. And that's what we're noticing with the climate reanalyzer. All these temperatures are still keeping up. And what hurricanes, for those of you who do not know what they typically do, what their purpose is, is they keep the waters cool. They keep the sea surface temperatures as well as the waters in, uh, below the surface cooler. And, they, and, the, and it's kind of the Earth's way of balancing out the atmosphere because if the Earth is starting to uh, warm up a little too much, it's going to produce some extreme weather to kind of counteract that. So... That's ultimately what we're noticing right there, and that's why we're seeing more extreme weather because you're seeing more. Uh, we're seeing warmer and warmer waters every year. It's usually being met with more and more extreme weather across much of the world. So that's stuff you might that you might want to consider right there. This is the ocean heat content right here. OHC continues to be a very big issue, especially in, if a system starts to organize and develop in all of this this huge bank of ocean heat content where you have water temperatures of 30 plus degrees Celsius going in many cases, well over 100 meters deep. Let me go ahead and show you this right here for the 26 degree isotherms right here. We have a lot of several areas that the that the these 30 plus degree Celsius waters go down 150 meters. And that's just stuff you're going to have to pay close attention to. I know this is the 26 degree isotherm, but looking at the global sea surface temperatures, you're noticing a bunch of 30s and 31s and 32s that go down that deep. And that's why I'm kind of highlighting that in this chart right here. You are also noticing that the ocean heat content and the uh, the depth of the water is starting to recover in uh, where Ernesto was. And that's ultimately going to be some relatively bad news. Let's just hope another system doesn't go in there, uh, doesn't go in there or anything like that because Bermuda got hit relatively hard. I know they were prepared for it. And thankfully there uh, there was uh, thankfully uh, there was there weren't I don't think there were too many fatalities or injuries or casualties in that regard but still we don't need any more systems moving through here. I will say though if Let's say a hurricane formed today, moved out to sea and entered that cold wake. That would end up weakening the system a lot quicker, and that would be some good news in general. However, in two to three weeks, you're not going to see the same stuff anymore. And it's just interesting to kind of play uh, uh, play with that and, and kind of pay attention to it. Let's go ahead and show you the wind shear map. Here's the latest wind shear. Look at all this wind shear right here. There is not very much right here. You're seeing that flare up in the Caribbean starting to calm down quite a lot. You're noticing the wind shear across a lot of these areas in the mid-Atlantic region. Well, not in uh, not the mid-Atlantic in the United States, but the middle part of the Atlantic Ocean starting to calm down a lot. You're also noticing a regression of the uh, wind shear in the main development region. You're seeing this push further out and further to the east and allowing for more tropical waves to breathe up. This is typical uh, your classic late August setup right there uh, of wind shear. Look at the Gulf of Mexico. Very low wind shear. There is some wind shear, like on the extreme north tip of it. That's mainly due to a front moving through uh, parts of Florida, parts of the deep south, and those areas right there. But then you're going to start seeing that wind shear push back up and allow for tropical waves to organize and develop over there. And that's just your latest wind shear map in that regard right here. We can go ahead and show you the shear forecast and the moisture component to all of this, courtesy of the European model in terms of the 0Z. I know the 12Z is actually coming out right about now. I want to check this 12Z and kind of see how much oh never mind the 12z is actually completely out so we can go ahead and show you the 12z uh, shear and moisture forecasts let's go ahead and use the 200 to 850 millibar wind shear right here here's the situation that we have pulled up for you right now Wind shear continues to weaken across a lot of these areas in the Caribbean Sea, in the Gulf of Mexico. You have that trough that's been moving, uh, moves down there. It's going to eventually move out of the region and be, uh, form a bit of a ridge in the next few days. Although some wind shear could end up getting into the Gulf of Mexico in the next few days or so in that regard, which would not uh, be very favorable for tropical development. But watch where the wind shear does decrease. It decreases in the Caribbean Sea. It decreases in the western two-thirds of the main development region. It decreases at least to a small extent in the... Um uh, so, uh, sorry, in the, uh, in the Atlantic Basin. 
Uh, so that's uh, where it is decreasing. And you're going to continue seeing that fluctuation of models, and you're going to see that fluctuation of wind shear, but you're on a downward spiral and a downward trend, and you're very primed for hurricane season pretty much by the end of August going into September. That's why I'm saying September is going to be a very active month. The wind shear is going to completely collapse in a lot of areas. You're going to see not very much dry air intruding to it, and you're going to see those warm waters start to kick in and allow for this season to really take off. So that's something we're going to have to pay attention to. Moisture component to all this, and we'll also show you the anomaly to this. Moisture, you are seeing some dry air in a lot of this, but it gets a lot more broken up, and it gets a lot more wave-like, and that's just stuff you're going to have to pay attention to in that regards. There's plenty of moisture for tropical development. All you need is a nice little moisture pocket and low wind shear to allow tropical development to continue and organize and develop. So I just figured I'd point that out very quickly as we show you the moisture forecast. I also want to show you the moisture anomalies just to give you an idea of what we're looking at. This is how, this is the moisture that we're noticing right here. We're noticing the moisture, there's a lot more moisture than average because typically what you'd see with the moisture you'd see a lot more a, a thicker a, amounts of dry air at least at this current point in time as the majority of tropical development that does happen doesn't exactly start in the main development region yet rather it starts in the gulf of mexico or the caribbean sea thanks to the north sorry central american gyre that's over there as for, well we take a look at the anomalies yeah there are some drier spots than average the caribbean sea is an example of that but you're seeing a lot more moisture than average in the main development region and the atlantic basin and that's some really bad news for those who do not want to see some tropical development. I know hurricane season continues to ramp up. You guys do not want to see any of that. For those who are impacted by barrel, you especially do not want to see that because what you're noticing as well is you're noticing the Bermuda High is getting a lot stronger. And yes, you do have a trough that moves through, but ultimately the steering currents are going to be strong enough to drive these systems closer and closer to land. And that's what we do not want to see in that regard. Let's go ahead and show you weather nerds with the European and GFS ensembles right here. We're going to go ahead and start with the European 0Z ensembles. We are noticing a bit of an uptick in terms of intensification. We're seeing a quality over quantity type of ensemble in this regard. You're not seeing as many ensembles calling for tropical development, but the ones that do have it, have it lasting a lot longer, have it lasting uh, and pretty much impacting a lot of areas, and that's some stuff you're going to have to keep close uh, close tabs on, mainly because the ensembles have been showing a bit of an upswing as of recently. This is going to zoom out. Let's go ahead and show you the 12Z ensembles as well, just to kind of give you a general idea with the European. Yeah, you are noticing uh, some more of the uh, ensembles. Just It's kind of been uh, pretty steady in that regard, but we are seeing a big uptick of ensembles starting to organize in the Caribbean Sea, and that's something you're going to want to pay attention to, mainly because what I'm noticing is, and remember, what I said before is, is that the Atlantic, not the Atlantic, but the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean are generally where August systems start to organize and develop thanks to the Central American gyre. So that's just stuff you're going to want to keep tabs on. Last one we're going to show you is the GFS ensembles. We'll show you the tw uh, Zero Z Right here, the Zero Z has been was really aggressive this morning when those runs came out, and I figured I'd just go ahead and, and show you that right here. Let's go ahead and actually uh, give you a better plot for this. We're going to zoom in on this. That's what we have right here. We're seeing a, a multiple hurricane scenarios from these ensembles impacting the Caribbean. Lesser Antilles are just staying out to sea, and we're seeing a lot more of these ensembles continue to ramp up. And lastly, we can go ahead and show you the 12Z. So we're seeing some more of these ensembles continue to kind of swing up and down. Remember, it's quality over quantity. That's what we're noticing with these runs, and that's just stuff you're going to have to pay attention to. So that's pretty much what we have for, in terms of the ensembles. Uh, operational forecasts, I can go ahead and show you the European very quickly right here because remember the uh, the operational models may not show uh, much right now but if the ensembles are picking up on stuff it's definitely going to take some time for these operational models to catch up and that's stuff we're going to have to pay attention to and that's kind of a similar step to what we see with the European this is the 12Z Euro right here we can also go ahead and show you the 0Z Euro as well just to kind of give you an idea of what we're looking at not too much going on but obviously here is the ensembles right here you start looking at this stuff and you're just starting to notice that uh, that we we have ensemble runs right here saying, hey, something big might be going on. We're going to have to pay attention to it. So that's ultimately 
some of the stuff I wanted to cover today, and also some of the climatological stuff I wanted to talk about as well in terms of the ENSO, as well as how September may play out, and all that stuff that we're potentially going to take a look at. So we're closing the video out right here. I really hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us get more people engaged with weather. If you want to come hang out with us at Storms United, be sure to join our Discord server. We are talking about hurricane season back there. Link to that will be in the end screen. Shout out to Daniel as an official sponsor of the Pat's Path Predictor channel. If you want to be an official sponsor or a friend of Pat, be sure to join our Patreon. Link to that is the first link in the description down below. And with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe. <laughs>